What's happening, everybody? I could not come to West Africa and not introduce you to some of the people who have made this, uh, this I guess, late 2020, early 21 uh, trip so special. So I'm taking you back to Cote d'Ivoire because Cote d'Ivoire opened my eyes to so much of what West Africa has to offer that I didn't know. And so this lady right here, Mahim, she was actually introduced to me by Danny when I was in the barbershop in DC. This is what tells you, all of these connections. Danny overheard me talking about coming to uh, Cote d'Ivoire, which is also known as the Ivory Coast. And he said, I'm from the Ivory Coast. And he said, I'm going to connect you with my friends there. And this is what's going to happen. And he made it happen. And so when he connected me with Mahim, Mahim, it, she told me where to go. She said, go here, try this, try this place over here. And every place she told me to go was first class and helped to make my trip to Cote d'Ivoire one of the most memorable trips I've ever had. So Mahim, I want to thank you for joining me today. And, and your story, when we had a chance to talk, your story fascinated me and I wanted to share it with everyone. Uh, so we'll get into that, but how are you doing today? Um, I'm doing great. Um, thank you for interviewing me. You're most welcome. Um, Danny, when Danny told me you were coming down, I was like, um, fine, I'll, I'll tell him everything and anything and see what he's like. I wasn't expecting someone as open as you are. I was expecting an American, um, but I'm uh, really glad <laughs> that you're really open-minded and you um, play the game, you accepted everything as I told you to do it, which I think is very important. Well, thank you. And uh, and I guess I'm, uh, that's a, one little thing you said that, so how, okay, let, let's, we're gonna rewind it because you have experience in America. You actually, uh, you're originally from Cote d'Ivoire, but you went to school in America. So tell us a little bit about that. Okay, so most people here, after they graduate from high school, um, typically go abroad to study because of the lack of quality in our school system. So those who have the mean to it um, typically go out abroad. Most people will go to France because we're a French speaking country. Um, in my case, I went to the US because I, I had been to France before and it was fine. And I was kind of like, putting myself into the idea of like going there and leaving there for like four to five years um, and studying in France. And then um, my sister actually moved to Washington DC. So I went there for a visit on vacation. Um, and I actually spent like two months there on vacation and it was so fun. Um, I quickly learned, um, I went from learn knowing like the basic English from school to okay. like quickly getting into um, whole sentences and telling people what I wanted because the US is really different, especially East Coast where it's like people won't hold your hand. You have mm. to like have that go getter attitude. And I really like how I was challenged there. So that was mainly why I was like, when I got back here, I was like, hmm, on, on second thought, I don't think I can go to France anymore because I like the US more. Oh, wow. So that was two years before graduating. So I already had my mind made. Um, and then when I went back um, after graduation, um, I did three months of English school. And then I went to, I started going to um, Montgomery College, Rockville campus, as, right. most Africans, <laughs> <laughs> as most Africans, West African do. Um, if you studied in the US, especially in Washington DC, it's the one stop for everyone and everyone who's been there will recognize that. Um, and then I did, I, I like Montgomery College because it's, it's a good um, stepping stone into going to university because you 
Diversity is really 100% American culture. And I think if I had been to university first, I the, the cultural clash would have been so huge for me. But going to a place that has like, oh, there's there are a lot of Africans here. And then people will tell you like, okay, here it's different. Like you don't do that here. Um, or, and stuff like that. Like one of the first thing I learned and that was when I was on vacation is Coke, right? You, you wouldn't think about it, but we don't call Coke, Coke here. We call it Coca-Cola. Okay. And then in the US you go Coke. And so the first time I'm ordering a Coke at um, McDonald's, I'm like, um, I want Coca-Cola. And everyone's looking at me like, what is she talking about? Oh, they didn't know and then Coca-Cola someone had to tell me, no, 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 it's Coke here. And I say Coke over here. I, I, I got a Coke last night. And he, right. and he said, Coke Zero? I was like, no, 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 Coke Zero. I need Coke. I need regular Coke. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. Um, and so that that was good for me. So I did two years in Montgomery College and then went to um, George Washington University. Okay. GW. Um, GW. Um, Foggy Bottom. That was a wonderful experience. I loved it there. Um, mainly because it was, it's a city college. So I didn't feel like I was in college, I felt like I was in this city. And Foggy Bottom is really special because it has the IMF, the World Bank, and everyone is like all suit and ties. Oh, and yeah. Yeah, yeah. it looks like they have everything together. So by the way people are dressed, it kind of like pulls you to have everything together as well because you're like okay everyone looks like so put together here let me not be the one that is like kind of like slacking back um and so that that experience was great for me because i had a chance to like make a lot of friends at gw and then it wasn't like it wasn't about the education itself it's the skills that i gained um Hmm. that was really what I'm taking back from the whole experience. Well, so why did you go back to Cote d'Ivoire? Why why didn't you just stay in America and live it up? Right. Okay. So after um, graduation from GW, I got an internship at um, a public relations company, SKDK Nico Bunker. Um, in DC, um, and then I started working there, and it was it was really fun. I love the like the whole culture there. Um, and then one time I came down in Cote d'Ivoire on vacation, and I was talking to my friends, and they were like, "Okay, I'm doing this, and I'm doing that, and like." this is revolutionary and this is changing this and this is changing that and we're doing this and we're doing that. And then when it was my turn to speak, I was like, okay, I'm an accountant and that's all. (laughs) (laughs) And so I guess very, like, it was very for me, like, okay, do I want new challenges? Do I want to be part of something new? Do I, like, we all, talk about like okay our continent like i'm going to talk of the continent as a whole i'm not just a country because we west africans tend to do that and i think even like the rest like all of the africans i've met um tend to say oh we need to change this we need to change that like once you've been abroad once or twice you start to notice the differences and you're like, okay, we're doing this back home and it's not right. And we all speak about change, but like how many of us are trying to actually change things? Hmm. And so I was, I, I kind of was looking back at myself and I was like, if I want this continent, this country that I call my own to change, I need to be part of it right? I need to start doing something to be part of it. So it was a difficult 
switch, it wasn't easy at all. Like I, I miss the US, I miss, I miss convenience store, I miss CVS, um, and then Uber Eats and all, all, everything convenient. But then if I really miss it, why don't I show it to my people? Hmm. Right? Yeah. Um, so that was the main driver of the move here. And luckily for me, I, I've had the chance to um, find a job here at a company that is at the forefront of revolutionary revolution. Okay, I can get this right. I'm gonna jump in there. Revolutionary. <laughs> You're gonna do that with me. With the Which place. is That's how it's gonna go. right, right. Um, this company is pioneering. I'm gonna change the word pioneering um, the payment industry in Cote d'Ivoire, in West Africa, in all Francophone Africa. That's the yeah, I saw, I saw what you guys were doing. I met the staff and what I saw, what impressed me, uh, all of the talent on the team, you know, just when, when we were all sitting at the table and right. you know, I, I couldn't speak French, um, but I know I had a couple of conversations with uh, some of your colleagues who spoke English and I was right. just so impressed. And then even uh, even with some of your colleagues that didn't speak English, I broke up with the Google Translate. And, <laughs> I was, and, and so it was. I was fascinated to see all of this talent at the table. And then as you started telling me more about the stories, I said, I understood why you came back home uh, to, to bring your talent and your skills. And, and, and I can see where you're going with this. You know, just your natural... Uh, personality and charisma is going to open doors for you. But then when you're part of a team that's already doing it, that's going to take you to the next level. So uh, I get it. I get it. I, and and like you said, if you saw all of the uh, conveniences that, because, you know, I'll talk a lot of trash about America, but America has some, <laughs> some nice things about it too. That, uh, like you said, <laughs> you know, things, you know, I, but it, it's, um, and you also talked about how if you want to improve it, then you want to be a part of it and you want to go back and do your, your share. Um, now, the, well, I mean, you know, what would you say the benefit of your educational experience in America has been now that you are back in Cote d'Ivoire? What, how would you say that Montgomery College GW experience, how is it benefiting you now back home? Okay. So, the, one of the main differences that I've noticed between people who studied in the US specifically okay. is that solution-minded attitude or mindset. It's, it's, a, it's an open mindset, I think, that I've gained, right? Mm -hmm. um, if in most situation, I try to always look at the silver lining and then find a solution, right? So because we're, I'm not gonna say behind, but because our evolution um, is different here, we have a lot of problems in society, mm -hmm. right? So even at work, if you're, let's say like one of the projects we're working on is like, um, we have a roadblock here and there the American mindset is that, okay, let me find what's blocking me and find a solution. Okay. Right? I agree. Let's get to the root <laughs> of <agree>. it. <laughs> Let's get to the root of it and then find a solution. And you don't realize that you're solution oriented until people come back to you um, and go, what can I do here? What can I do there? How can I do this and there? And then it's not only that, but like I, I can find a solution. And but if I'm finding it myself all the time, what's the value in it? Right? right. So by talking through my thought process, and that's something I've learned in the US, right? When you're writing a paper, when you're um 
doing your presentation, at some point you have to walk people through your thought process. And mm. by doing that, you're passing on that thought process to other people, right? And the next time they're confronted to a, a problem, they go, okay, um, here's the problem. Um, I think we should do this, this, and that, right? That's the second time. And then by moving on, by always doing that, the next time they're confronted to a problem, they go, this was the problem and this is how I solved it. Then mission accomplished, right? Like I've gained a skill and then I'm able to pass it on to someone else. Got it, got it. And I understood everything you said because uh, when when you talked about the benefit of the American um, the education or the mindset, it's really more the mindset and I guess part of the culture. Now you're able to take that benefit back and now you can get more things done to help continue the evolution of your culture. And it's not like you're modifying it and becoming American with it, but you're just saying, here's a benefit. This is something they do well. And this is something that we can incorporate into what we do that will make what we do even better. Um, and I'll tell you something that I was impressed with and that I noticed it also, uh, cause I think I was talking to, uh, Mosia and I was talking right. to, um, I forget the young lady's name from the UK. I think she's a, a model and. Right. Uh, right. Um, and, I think, let me not, it's Marie Therese or Marie Colomb. Okay. I'm, I'm, I'm going to go with whatever you say. <laughs> I'm going to go with whatever you say. <laughs> We're going to come back to that in a second, though. <laughs> but, but I was talking to both of them, and they were both, uh, I believe, educated. I think uh, was um, Mosia was she educated in Paris or was it? Where did she go to school? New York. Okay, that's right. New York. That's right. Right, right, right. New York. It's right outside of New York. Though. It was right outside of New York, I believe. Uh, I think she corrected us right, on that. Right. And then. Uh, the other young lady, I think she said she went to school in either Paris or London. London. And, uh, but London, right. And so, but bo all of you are um, at least bilingual, meaning French and English. And, um, and I think right. there were a couple other people who were French only. Uh, but the, the thing that I noticed is that for those of you who had that experience, it was like you could flow in you could flow having a conversation with me, but then you could jump in and have a conversation with your friends in French. And it's like, it, it has given you a skill set that I never, what you, what, what you guys did for me is like with my children's books, I said, I'm going to translate my children's books into French because I was watching how you all navigated. And I said, you know what? And I'm looking at all of you, you're all African. <laughs> and I'm like, but they're speaking <laughs> French. They're speaking French, like straight up French. And I can't speak French. Right. I can say bonjour. I can say come to the room. I can count the 10 under the wall. I can say, we never do those two threads. I, you know, I can do that. But after that, I'm, I'm lost. You know, I, okay. I, I think I said, yeah, yeah. I, 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 I say bonsoir now. But now, 2021, I'm going to learn how to speak French. We're going to have a conversation in French in 2021. By the time this year is over, we're going to come back and, and we'll at least have. 10 seconds worth of a conversation. <laughs> <laughs> I believe that. I believe it. I but, but that, yeah, oh, it's going to happen. Watch, watch what I want to tell you. Uh, and you all inspired it. But here's the thing. When, when I think back on that, the, the skills that, that you have in addition to it is that it opens up opportunities for you because you are bilingual and because it's, it's, I believe you call it Frank Francophone. Is that what that's mm -hmm. like the Afro French? Is that what it is? That's what you call it? Francophone? Francophone. It's all of those um French speaking countries. African right, countries. Right. Okay. Because then you have France and then you have, of course, you have Senegal, you have Guinea, you have Cote d'Ivoire, you have Mali, you have Burkina Faso, you have Niger, you have Cameroon, you have Benin, you have Togo. Who else speaks French in uh, Africa? Um, did you say Benin and Gabon? Uh, I said um, I said uh, Togo, uh, uh, Togo Benin. Uh, uh, I might have said them. I can't remember. Oh, Gabon. <laughs> yes, yeah, they do. Oh. Okay, and, yeah, and Cameroon, I think, is French and English, right? 
Absolutely. Yeah. Okay, so I didn't know Gabon was French only. I thought Gabon might have been um, English. Okay. And uh, and that's it. Those are the only ones? No other ones? Mauritius? What does Mauritius speak? Uh, that's French. a good question. We're French. French, okay. French. And, and uh, you know, Africa, a lot like of French Arabic, Africa. too. Okay. So I think it's okay. And then you have all of the northern countries, um, Morocco, Algeria, Tunisia, um, that are also French speaking. Um, really? I think I think we, we got it down. Does Libya Libya speak French? I don't think so. I think and what's the English and Arabic? Arabic. Okay. What about Sahara? What is it? Sub Sahara? Not Sub Sahara, but Sahara, the other. It's about Mauritius, it's called Saharan, something. Maybe that, uh, I don't know, maybe that one does or doesn't. Uh, Morocco speaks French? Yeah. Really? Oh, yeah. Yeah, absolutely. Okay, so it's not Portuguese. No, it's not. It's not. Um, it's only... No, it's not. It's not. Yeah, I can see how that could. No, it's not Portuguese. It's Cap, Cap Verde, which is. Oh, um... okay, okay, yeah. Cap Verde. Okay. Yeah, Cap Verde. Oh. That is okay. Portuguese. Okay, and then Angola's Portuguese and Sao Tome and um, a few other. Okay, so see, right. see, folks are getting a full uh, lesson, and um, I'm fascinated by how how you know the continent and, and how it's broken down in different languages and everything. So, um, so so all of those French speaking countries, francophone. Mm -hmm. So that's what called francophone. Um, right. So now with that, you have come you've come back home because uh, right now I'm currently in Ghana. I'm in Accra. Uh, you're in Abidjan, so that's the country right next door. Uh, how has how long have you been back home? Um, so what? Two years now? Two and a half okay. years. Okay, okay. Well, tell. Let me ask you this: Why should someone? Because <clears throat> this is a good question. Because uh, you had mentioned it earlier about um, you realize that I was open-minded as a quote unquote a, a American. Uh, why should someone from America visit Cote d'Ivoire, Ivory Coast? Okay. Um, it, it's a great question, but mm -hmm. I feel I'm, I'm going to do my best to answer it because I feel like I'm the worst person ever to answer a why question about traveling. Okay. Because <laughs> let me tell you something. If I, I like, I've been, I've been sick. I, I, I think I've been like travel depressed because of COVID-19, right? Because I okay. haven't traveled um, since March, right? I'm, I understand. I'm one of those people that get a rush on the airplane taking off. You know what I mean? Um, so first of all, you travel because you're a grain of salt in the ocean. Okay, okay. If you stay one place, like, what's the benefit of that? I don't see any benefit in staying where you are i think there's so many things in the world that need that like everyone should see that i don't understand why not traveling right so mm. that's like for culture for like i've i've heard a lot about america i've heard a lot about france i've heard a lot about um the uae um, but what you hear, what you see on television is never an accurate picture of what is actually going on in that country. And that's right? anywhere in the world. So that's anywhere. That's anywhere in the world. Absolutely. So traveling for me helps me being curious, right? right. Not only um in my life but in work in general because it's only when you get stranded in a foreign country where you don't speak the language and you need to do something or to get something that you're 
pushed to think like, okay, how am I going to say this? How am I going to like eat this really delicious looking meal? But I can't tell anybody that that's what I want. Right. So you figure out ways like we were talking about it. You were like, I couldn't tell them exactly what I want, but I use hand signals and like you, you push yourself out, outside your comfort zone and you only get positive things out of that. Right. So specifically um, to Cote d'Ivoire, um, if you're not interested in lovely, um, crystal clear water, thin sand beaches. If you don't like good food, if you don't like to party, if you don't like to have fun, if you don't like to meet new people, if you don't like good music, then you, I, I, I don't know if you can come because that's all we have here. That's all, that, right? and, and you, we, you we, said we have, you, You've tried our food, it's to die for. Um, the people are warm. Um, yeah. The water is like cold, crystal clear. We have those wonderful beaches. Not only that, we have like, you didn't get a chance to go like a little bit up north, but we have beautiful country. Um, hiking, biking, whatever you want, you can do here. And so it's a different, it's such a different culture um, Cote d'Ivoire from the rest of the continent like right now it's the holiday season and we have like so many people from neighboring countries that are here currently because the French have the savoir vivre we have the savoir party so right? you say the savoir I've heard that term so, so you said the savoir faire is that is that I think that's how we say the, it savoir, the savoir vivre it's like the way of life so okay. people say the French know how to live life. They they know how to enjoy life. I can we speak know that. how to throw a good party with good yeah. people. That's like yeah. our I'll say number one skill here. Right. I and agree. I was telling you this anecdote, even when it was a time of war in Ivy Coast, right? There was those curfew where people couldn't go out. There were people locking themselves in houses from 8 p.m. until 6 a.m. so that they could party together. No matter what is going on, no matter what happened, Ivorian have that ability to be resilient. Mm. Um, and resil that resilience comes from, okay, like this happened. Um, well, we dealt with it now let's celebrate the fact that it's it's done it's over yeah because you all work on a different level i that what i noticed i said these people work all day and and y'all are in the zone i mean i'm 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 like okay so it's like what would happen is like you would work all day be in the zone and then i would get this text about i don't know about seven o'clock or so you good well, you can check this out, check this. And I was like, you're working on this. And I was I was like, but it was like everyone that I knew, you know, who was in Cote d'Ivoire, that's, and, but then, and, and you remember, I think I said that, um, uh, did you tell me that, that I was going to dinner too early? Right. <laughs> Cause I, was like, yeah, I think I'll go over to the restaurant about uh, six or seven. You're like, what are you talking about? We don't eat dinner at six or seven. I mean, I said, oh, okay. And so I, yeah. <laughs> that I found that, out. That actually was another culture clash for me um, in the US, right? So I, I started like having American friends and wanting to like, go out to dinner. And they were all like, oh, let's go at the restaurant at like 6 p.m. And I'm like, what 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 is that for? <laughs> Is that for like early dinner and then we'll go back later? I don't, I have that understanding. You go back around 9.30 to, to get the main exactly, course. Exactly, exactly. Like um, last last weekend, I was out with some friend and we had a dinner reservation for 10 p.m. Right? Because <laughs> what- <laughs> American people in the bed. <laughs> what most people will do is that they'll like, like you said, it's work, 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 
we'll go to work and then once we're done at, with work you need time to like go home change decompress um shower and then you go out okay and so because we go out so late like typically we'll go to dinner around like nine nine to ten ish okay um, okay. And then after that, people will go to a lounge or something like that and um, sit down, have some drinks, and mm -hmm. then we'll only go to clubs at around 3 a.m. I so, heard about that. Wow. Right, right. When American club close at 3 a.m., and that's like really that late when American club to close, we go out to a club I train <laughs> and then <laughs> and um typically it's it's like it's not for long it's like you'll go around like maybe two to three and then stay there until 6 a.m um if you're really pushing it until 7 a.m and then people will like go to so around 7 a.m the bakeries will open so people will go to the bakery and have like um, early breakfast before going to bed. Oh, okay. So they don't turn around and just go right back to work the next day. If, if you have to go to work, then <laughs> I would not recommend going out to a club. So going like clubs are mostly on like Thursdays. Okay. And okay. Thursday, Friday, um, Saturday. Some people will go out on on Sunday, but that's really like on a different level. Um, okay. And then we have that saying like on uh, on Friday we don't we don't stay late at work. We leave work early. A lot of people will leave work on Friday around like three or four. Um, and get ready for the for the thing coming up later on that night. Exactly. Exactly. Um, and then, but you all like, have that brunch. You all have that brunch on Sundays out at the uh, Akula Manson. Akula. Akula, yeah. So brunch, brunch is actually very new here. We didn't used to have brunch. Um, it's very different from American brunch, where you brunch will start at ten in the U.S. Here, most brunch will start at eleven, um, or even like twelve or one. Mm -hmm. Brunch will start really late. Um, one of the best brunch in town is Akula, like you said. It's actually out of town. It's by right. the beach. It's a wonderful environment. But like we also have like hotels here that are trying to do brunch and more and more restaurants. So here, like in the in the beginning, like two years ago, it was only hotels that were doing brunch. Okay. Um, people are not really accustomed to Sunday brunch because um, they'll go to church and then once you're done with church, you go visit family. Um, and it's a really, it's just started and it's really like young um, people who've been like me, who've been, um, who studied abroad that are coming back mm -hmm. and they're like, we, we've been doing this thing in the U.S. and it's it's been really good. Let's do it here. Kind okay, of thing. So, like, like you were saying earlier, like we 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 went um, abroad. We took a pick at what was going on. We brought it back and added our special sauce. That's right. Right. That's what um, I saw. And so brunch here, you have sometimes you'll have like actually breakfast item like croissant, pain au chocolat. And then, but most of the time you have our dishes. Like- I saw some the, waffles the, the, there, well, I, didn't, I, saw, I, didn't see any, I didn't see any pancakes, but I did see some crepes. Right, right. Um, even if you saw the pancakes, I would tell you don't eat it. Cause it's not, it's, it's a heavy crepe. It's not a pancake. <laughs> It's not the real deal. You you get it. You pick it's it up and you're like, deal. like I just and gained five pounds just from eating this one crepe. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. Um, 
unfortunately i haven't found a place here that does real pancakes not yet mm. if i do that i'll let you know that might be an idea though that might be something to uh we'll import mm -hmm. some anjamama uh pancake mix <laughs> maybe not anjamama that might not be good you know, <laughs> we'll over and uh I think yeah. that was the part. I think that was the part for me that I, I really enjoyed was um, it was the food, uh, the hospitality is what really sold me on Cote d'Ivoire. Uh, everyone, it was like the culture. It was like everyone who knew I was coming. It's like you didn't know me from anybody, but right. you went out of your way to make sure that I had the information I needed. You checked in on me. But, and, and that same thing, Danny, whoever Danny connected me with, everybody did the same thing. And I said, now this would not normally happen because um, I've been to some places where it's kind of like, hey, he's there. And, but, but for whatever reason, everybody checked in on me. Everybody was like, go here, check this out, do this, do that. Even in the midst of the, everything that everybody had going on, I was like, wow, right. this is a nothing in like customer service. I'm, I'm gonna add this to like, <laughs> Some of what I do, because I said I need to step my game up because I'm not even that attentive to people's needs. But what it did, it left such a positive impression that the reason why I'm back in Ghana is because of Cote d'Ivoire. The reason why I came back to Accra is because of what I saw in Abidjan and how uh -huh. you all treated me. I said, wow. And, and you all were telling me, well, you know, Accra has the same thing. I was like, well, I think I need to go back and see because so what happened, <laughs> right? Because I was like, I don't think I saw that part of it when when I was there. But what has uh -huh. happened since I've been back here, it's like for whatever reason, like folks have been taking care, they're checking in on me. I'm like, well, what is this all about? I said, what about <laughs> this? And but how about this? Even people in Cote d'Ivoire still checking in on me. So that right. was, that's the, I mean, so I'm, I'm over here in, I'm over here in this British colony now. Uh, <laughs> so, <laughs> you good? You good, bro? You good? You okay? So it's, so I, I can't wait to get back and I can't wait to bring people um, so they can just kind of see the vibe because we're so misinformed in America about. Oh my God, yes. It's, I'm like, it's like Abidjan is the hidden treasure for real, as far as, uh, culture and hospitality and, and right. all of that is hidden treasure. And and we're so misinformed in America. We are so, I mean, you know, because you've spent time in America, so you know how we think, you know, the, you know, the good side and then, you know, the know. other stuff, you know, you know, know. The, <laughs> that other stuff we're trying to break free from. Um, but, but I think the, the good part about it, and, and this is what I say to you, and that's why I thank you for taking time out of your, because I know this, this is like your day of rest, I know, and and I was like, can you you uh, you, can you squeeze me in the schedule a little bit? <laughs> but the good part for you is that your future is going to be very bright. Um, Thank you, because you have picked up the the best of wherever you go. So you picked up the best of America. You picked up the best of Cote d'Ivoire. I don't know where else you traveled, but because you have a desire to want to travel you now understand the value in it. And, and so it seems like wherever you go, even if the place has challenges, you'll recognize the challenges, but you'll extract the good from it and take it and, and, and allow that to become a part of who you are. Absolutely. And, and yeah, and, and that's that's the part that um that I was so impressed with. And uh, and I told you, you know, I, I told you, I said, well, I said, we're gonna figure out how to work together in some capacity. I don't know how it's gonna happen. <laughs> but it's gonna figure happen. I'm going to figure it out. I, I, I said, and I said, that's rare for me to like, listen, I got to figure out some kind of way um, for, well, you, you know, I have the children's books and everything. I'm going to figure it out though. It, it, it'll, it'll all click. Now, on this <laughs> note, I, now I want you to break down for me because I, I was trying to pronounce your name the right way. So it's Mahim. That's the pro correct pronunciation, but yes. I, I got it mixed up. So it was, that I know the Merriam, that's another Merriam. Ma Ma See, I'm, I'm walking down the road. I need to leave this alone right now. <laughs> so it's my name. <laughs> that's how you pronounce right. your name. And then break right. down the three other pronunciations of names similar to yours. Okay, so Mahiam, it, it actually comes from Mary, right? Okay. Um, it's, it's a, it's a, 
So you have Mary. So my name is Maria. It's okay. it has. I'm just saying it with a French accent, right? But if you say it with an English accent, which is Miriam, it's okay. a whole other name here. Because some people here are, are called uh, Miriam. And so my name is spelled M-A, and that's Mariam. But if mm. you spell it M-E, it's Miriam. Okay. And then there's M-Y, which is Miriam. See. It's all this Mary, but see, see, see. It, it it's it's very different from depending on where your origins are. So that's the funny things, the funny thing about Cote d'Ivoire too. We have here about sixty different dialects. Hmm. Right. So I I don't think we ever got down to talking about it, but we. It's a real like mix of culture here where okay. you have people coming from very different culture. Like we were talking the other day and you were asking me like, do most people have um, French names? Yeah, I was, or, I was going here, this, that was, I was going there next. Yeah. Okay, 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 yeah. So we have the, um, in the pot, in the whole pot of different culture, some people here, the Baule people, are originally descended from Ghana. Okay, got it. So they came, they're they're originally from Ghana, migrated here, and so they are the most likely to give um their to pass on their name to the kids. Okay. Right? So you have like very typical Baudet kids like Kofi, which you can also find in Ghana, but it's spelled differently. Right. You have um, Yao, you have Konan, and those are typical Baudet names. And they'll get, they'll pass on those names, those first name to people. So okay. your last name will be very typical of your culture. Okay. Um, of the 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 um, culture you're you're originally from, and then okay. some people will give you will give a French name like my first name is Rosalie. Okay. And that okay, and that's from my grandmother. So let me like take a step back here. I was gonna, I was gonna say yeah because I was like right. So, let okay. me take a step back here and take me as an example of how like we have mixes of culture. So on my dad's side, his father is from Northern Cote d'Ivoire. They're like Konati, right? Mm -hmm. And his, my, my dad's mother is from Cap Verde. Ah, okay. So you have that mix going on for my dad, right? Cote d'Ivoire and Cap Verde. Yes, and then yes. on my mom's side, you have another mix, right? So her dad is from here, but from the south end part. Okay. And then her mom is from Guinea. Hmm. Okay. So you have also that region, little yeah. Yeah. mix, right? So if you dial it down to me, like I have three different countries mixed in me. Right. You know what I mean? So I, um, and it's, you will most likely find that for most people here. It's three, four, sometimes more. Um, and that's where we get that we're all speaking different languages. So mm. interestingly, none of the, my friends at the table, none of my colleagues spoke um, the dialect that I speak, Jula. It, it's Bombara from Mali. Okay. But it's it's so funny. Like I have this one friend who is in DC, um, and she moved to Montreal now. But she speaks the same languages as me. Okay. Our conversations are funny because we'll speak French, English, I'm... and Bambara at the same time, and sometimes in the same sentence. And it goes like, whatever word that comes first to your mind, you let it out. Fascinating. 
fascinating. And so, so you, that's how like my my grandmother, I, I remember very clearly she passed away, but my grandmother could speak, I think, 10 languages. Wow. Right. And and, then, I'm, I'm, and when people tell me, oh, you speak like three languages, that's great. I'm like, no. Mm -mm. Like I I have my point of reference that is 10. I feel like I'm <laughs> lacking behind. Well, what do you think I feel like right about now? <laughs> <laughs> I speak Geechee though. I can speak Geechee. See, that's that's Southern South Carolina dialect down in uh -huh. South Carolina. And I can speak DC vernacular. And, and so I, I, I okay, I, I might be trilingual. Uh, okay, okay. <laughs> yeah, I, I, I speak a little Spanish. I, I can do a little better with the Spanish. Um, but right. but you said something that was key, and I wanted to ask you this because I, I always tell people who are part of the African diaspora that. Everyone I've spoken to on the continent of Africa, they know their tribe. They mm -hmm. know their tribe. Um, right. And they, so which tribe are you from? So. We well, got three of them. <laughs> right, right. Um, so all of my, so from my, so you pick the tribe from your dad's side. That's okay. where you're from. Okay. Okay. So everyone from my dad's side is their village is um, Baule. Okay. okay. Baule. But it's right because we're Bambara. It's very rare that we're um, in that region. Okay. So you gotta like go back and then dig further and find out that like okay. Um, even though my great great grandparents were in this Baule tribe, that's not where we're descending from. We're descending mm. from um, another village from like northern Cote d'Ivoire, but there's no one, there's very few of us left there. Okay. And those who are there now don't know us. Okay. But Right, so my great granddad was in this Baule tribe, and that's where all of our people are now. So okay. if you ask me, I'll say, Oh, I'm Baule, but then most people will say, But your last name isn't Baule. Mm. From the last name, some people will be able to tell that okay. you're not you're not from there, or like you're supposed to be from there, and they'll ask okay. you. You know, okay. and like in in kindergarten, if you don't know the tribe you're from, people will shame you. Literally, like you don't know. Me. Go ask your parents. You know, and then like I was saying to you, I was joking about it. If if you don't know your village, your village will come to you. There's always someone from the village coming down to the city and being like, "Hello, I'm your cousin." Um, yeah, I'm from that village and. You'll, you'll figure it out one way or another. So even colonization was not able to destroy that connection. Because like for those of us here in America, we are like clueless. Right. Most of, us, most of us are clueless. Not all of us, but most of us are clueless as to, unless we've taken a DNA test and we've gone through the whole thing. Uh, exactly. But, I, but it seems like in, in most African cultures that I've spoken to, um, they everyone knows their tribe. Now, what is your uh, African Cote d'Ivoire name? It's Mariam. So that is your that is your that's your tribal name. Um, I I didn't get a I would say I didn't get a tribal name. Okay, okay. Um, my my last name, my dad's name is Konate. That's my last okay. name, and. In his family, they all got French names. Got it. Okay. Um, got it. Got it. Got it. Got it. Right. And then on my mom's side, they all have Arabic names. Oh. So here's the here's one thing too about names here. Um. So for our tribe, which are like Bombaha, Jula, um, in Cote d'Ivoire, um, once if you have a kid you 
their, their first name will most likely be that of one of your parents. Okay. So um, in my family, for example, our first kid, our, my, so my older sister is named after my mom's mom. Mom's you know mom. I mean? Got it. Right. Okay. Okay. And then my older brother is named after my dad's dad. Ah, okay. Right. You see how it goes? Like you will like, let's say like, if I have a kid, if it's a girl, I might give my mom's name or my husband's mom's name. But you know what? We do that here in America. Right. I and, mean, we and, do. I mean, if, if previous generations did it more than present day right, generations. That's true. That's well, true. I look at the census and I'll see people with like my, my father's mother, her name mm -hmm. was Roxana, but she named her daughter Roxana. But then I saw a lot of, when I looked through the census, there were a lot of other Roxanas and different names that I would see. It, you know, it seemed right. like it was skipping generations. So yeah, so okay. So, so I get it, I understand. It's, it's very similar. So if one of those parents have uh, a tribal name, you're most likely to get it. If they don't, then you're not likely to have it. And, but it's really different. That's what I was pointing out about the tribe because they have specific name based on the day of the week you were born. Okay. Okay. And that sounds like with the uh, Ashanti or the, uh, yeah, the Ashanti do something, but the fancy right. do it too. Got it. Okay. Okay. So you have it. Okay. Got it. All right. And and the ballet are coming from Ghana. So they're part so, of the, uh, the, the Akan. Are they part of the Akan? Exactly. You got that down. I'm, I see it. I'm, I'm in the pocket. <laughs> Let me find out. <laughs> you have it down. So, so, okay, see, I'm getting it, I'm, I'm learning, it's, it, this is helping me. I tell people all the time, it's nothing like learning from, uh, directly from the sources. And, and, and you have given us so much information today and, it's, and I'm so glad because you can put a context to it most people don't have. Coming from a French speaking African country, being educated in some capacity in the DMV, Foggy Bottom, Montgomery right. College, MoCo, you know, so, right? so it's like we got all of this, this, this uh, gumbo of uh, experiences, but then you still have your authentic uh, Cote d'Ivoire African tribal experience. And again, how you show up in the world is completely different than you're, you're trilingual. So you can speak your traditional language, you can speak English, and you can speak French. And all of that comes together as a part of your uh, your world experience, and you can help and teach and inform and educate uh, people, a part of your generation, other generations, uh, you know, where people can actually say, wow, I've learned something new. So that, that's, um, that is uh, fascinating. So, um, so anyway, anything you want to encourage everybody with before we wrap up, because I know that, um, I know that, you know, you, you, you have uh, so much to offer. So with any closing words you would like to share? Come to Côte d'Ivoire. Oh, no, any closing words that you want to share to anyone, anyone who's watching? Yeah, to everyone. Yeah, come to Cote yeah. Come visit us. Oh, uh, come to Cote d'Ivoire. Oh, yeah. oh, you will. You will. I, I, <laughs> uh, I can't wait to bring a group to Cote d'Ivoire because I, I have to warn them, though. I said, because, like, if you have to go to bed early and if you, because some people, they got to go to bed early. Some people right. have to be in bed by 830. Don't, don't even. Don't, don't bother. Don't, don't Nobody. even bother. No, we, we, no, no, we, no, we, we'll, we'll just don't even bother. But <laughs> if you're willing to, um, if you're willing to see something new and experience something that is very, very unique, um, it was very mature. Even like the the like the young crowd, if you will, was very. When I say mature, it wasn't like a ratchet kind of out of control, buck wild. It was, I was just like, wow, this is very interesting. And the, and the thing is, is that even the generations, uh, like, I guess it was the IWA event. <laughs> and, right. uh, so, 
<laughs> glad it wasn't, wasn't NWA event. Uh, so that's a whole other. <laughs> <whole number. laughs> uh, uh, so, so it was, uh, but it was all ages there. I think I saw some 60 somethings in yep. there. And, you know, obviously 20 somethings were there, 30 somethings, 40 somethings. It was really, really fascinating to just kind of watch everybody networking in that space. So, so anyway, um, I just want to thank you for your time, Machim and uh, Rosalie. <laughs> there we go. <laughs> and um, uh, what we'll do when I, um, we'll follow this up at the, sometime during this year, and we're going to have a conversation in French. Ah, yes. I'm already, I have my, yes. Tutor, I have my, 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 what do you call it? I forget what the thing is called, this app on my phone. And, uh, and I'm learning and, and opportune is, is, uh, helping me a little bit with it. So, all, <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> cause I told her, I said, look, next time I come, I said, I, I I'm Google translate. I said, but next time, uh, I'm going to have a conversation. And so that's what everybody, um, I think, uh, it was a uh, Jamima and Miriam and uh, right. I, I, I made a point to remember everybody's names. Um, and he, yeah, that's it. You got it down. I got it down. And then uh, the two gentlemen, um, they gave me the ride back to the hotel. Um, right. Ali, so, but they spoke English. I think they spoke English. So Ali, Ali, I think Ali speaks English. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So that, but they were, again, everybody was so hospitable. So I can't wait to get back. Please tell everyone I said hello. And um, we'll next time we'll do, we'll do this conversation in uh, a little bit of the conversation in French. A little, little bit. <laughs> I like that. <laughs> I like that. All right. Well, you have a great day. <laughs> Thank you again. Thank you.